Welcome to an unboxing of the Forerunner 965. We're deep diving into the software and comparing it against the 265 to help with your buying decision. Let's go! So hello there gang and welcome to another Active IJs video. We've got a really exciting one here for you. I've had to wait a very long time for the 4965 to be in stock, uh, but finally it is and finally it's here. Thank you to Wiggle as well. So obviously they're offering an exclusive deal where you can get it there at the moment. I don't think it's even available from Garmin yet. So yeah, thank you for selling it to me so that I can get a nice and early review sample out there. You can see here we've got the 4965 box on the right hand side and on the other side we've got the 4265. That's what I've currently got on my wrist. Really big enjoying it um, and it's a great watch very lightweight good size as well but what i like about the larger version of the 965 is that larger screen even for like the same form factor and obviously the much more impressive battery life i'm not massively fussed about the titanium bezel but you know, if I'm being honest, it does look really cool. So I'm looking forward to enjoying that more kind of premium look. I also like the fact that the perimeter of the watch as well has got those little hash marks on, which I think for using the compass and maps is gonna look so cool with that extra screen sky. So let's jump right in, shall we? For now, we're just gonna move the 265 out the side now, straight onto some bird poo. <laughs> and open up the watch. So you'll see on this side, we've got this, it's AMOLED premium GPS running and training smartwatch. We've got the back here. It's gonna say the exact same thing on the other side. On the top here, we've got the Garmin symbol. And again, I guess the serial number. And on the bottom here, again, we've got this motto that are going for engineered on the inside for life on the outside. So let's get it open. Okay. And it got a little stain on the box here. I don't know if this has been opened before, but there she be, there she is. Looking very good here. We've got the watch here with the screen protector on. Um, I can see some dimples in there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll lift out these, these little tags that you can use to lift out the box. So inside the box, we have the new Garmin charger that has the USB-C charging connector. Um, and we've got the Garmin symbol there. We've also chucked in a spare, very dusty um, cap here, but these are good because they do break. Um, and rather than buy one off Amazon, you've got a Garmin branded one there. So this is for tying down your watch onto your wrist. I'm gonna show you soon how to take the band off and put on a nylon strap because I do prefer those. And in terms of the watch, we've got nothing special here. Um, it's literally just strapped in. Um, so we'll take it out, shall we? Move the box to the side, taking this off. And the last little bit here. So here she is, this is what she looks like from the back. Um, from the back, you can see it says 41965. You've got the serial number on the left here. We've got the elevate heart rate sensor there. Charging cable is just there. And the band of the 965 is very similar to what you can see here on the 265. We've got the gray indentation. And in fact, and in fact, it looks like the exact same materials have been used. We're just gonna flip these both around and zoom in a bit. We're just gonna take off the plastic film and the screen underneath is looking good. So I can confirm thumbs up that we've got a good looking screen there. And this titanium bezel we've got on here is feeling really really premium. You can feel the weight increase, although it's not much. Definitely a really premium feel to this. So let's get this bad boy switched on. We've got a Strava Kudos here. We've got 4965 here. She is turning on, she is turning on. And here she is. So we're gonna select English. We're gonna select pair to phone. So I couldn't get this to work on any 4265. So you can see here, I can click on connect and it's gonna open up Garmin Connect for me. Connect it. Next, next, skip. Sync now. Thanks for registering your Garmin. The notifications just come through. We can see that notification on the watch I've been using so far. Okay, so these are the four runners. On the left again is the 965. On the right is the 265. This is the larger version. You can see it's just a smidge smaller. What we're looking at here, this is the watch face. And as you can see with the watch face already with the bigger screen, I think this is 1.4 inches, you're getting a lot more information on here. So you, not only can you see the time, but up here we've got three different things that you can click on. So you can click on the VO2 Max, I assume so, and come back to the watch face you can click on your last activity so i went for a run today you can come back and you can click on your recovery time so i've got 17 hours we've got the sunrise and sunset down here and we've got the battery level as well so that'll take you straight to the battery saver um you can edit all of those so yeah you can choose to have heart rate showing which i quite enjoy uh, you can also see as well i've changed the colors so this doesn't look the same as what you saw on the dc rainmaker it doesn't look the same as what you saw on desfit or chaser summit i've chosen to have this orange to go with the chat colors of my channel on the uh, 965 here uh, and you can choose to customize those by holding them down literally go to watch face and you can customize everything so you can customize the layout the data as i said earlier or the accent color and there are literally loads to choose from so whatever you're taking the fancy if you want a bit of purple if you want some gradients going on and you can choose to save that but there's also loads of other watch faces as well so you can scroll down 
and have a look at all of these watch faces. I mean, the list goes on. We're gonna come out of here though. Uh, the first things first, we're gonna take a scroll down. So when you scroll down, you are going to see that we've got the battery level on both of them. This was shipped with 98% um, just from using the watch with filming. Uh, also, I think it's downloading a software update as well. It's gone down pretty quickly. Um, you can see the heart rate. Is there gonna be any difference on the two? Uh, not really here. We've got the same heart rate for both of them and you'll be able to see the trends throughout the week, which I think is really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, no benefit of having the, the 965 yet, but don't worry, that is coming. We've got the body battery here. Now this is my favorite feature. Body battery is gonna see how good you're feeling and it's gonna drain that throughout the day. So, you know, if you have a really good night's sleep, you'll have a body battery of 100%. And by the end of the day, if you've really worked hard, you might be finishing at zero, but the the aim of the game is obviously to keep your morale, keep your body battery high. Um, I really like this. Again, I do have Physio True up and I think that Garmin need to get on top of this in terms of, uh, I've just connected the 965 with the Garmin Connect. They've both had a chance to sync up with each other, like hours to sync up with each other if they wanted to. It's just the data hasn't gone across. So yeah, you're gonna have to kind of start again with the metrics it seems. We'll go on to stress. Um, as you can see the stress throughout the day, it's been collected on the 265. That's what it would look like. And you can can scroll through both of these and have a look oh what was my stress at 257 today which i think is very cool and again that will show you a breakdown so i've rested for 10 hours i've had low stress for 47 minutes and yeah medium stress for 10 minutes high stress for five minutes again it'd be cool if physio true up would shoot across the information for example if you did want to use a garmin enduro for an ultra race have that sync up with your smaller watch or you've got the 965 and you wanted to wear a vivo smart band for sleeping uh, they're not going to tally up very well with each other so that is unfortunate okay so here we've got the training status here so it's showing me the same stuff which is good you can see that we've got the exact same load on both of these watches which is reassuring um, and you can click on your acute load and see how you're performing compared to what you should be doing so actually i could be training a little bit harder right now and my body should be able to keep up with that yeah your acute load is below optimal range it's saying here which helps with recovery but may eventually lead to detraining but to be honest that's exactly what i want i want my body to recover because <laughs> i've been injured for so long We'll select both of these. Same numbers again, which is really, really reassuring. You can see my load focus is for the same dates. And you can see I've really got a shortage here of low intensity training, which is represented by this blue line. Medium intensity is the orange and high intensity is the purple. Not too obvious, actually. Obviously, I've been using Garmin for quite a while now, so I know. But I can imagine someone looking at this graph and saying, what the hell does this mean? So maybe it would be good if they did have some labels there for the graph. You can see the VO2 max here, 55. You'll be able to see your trends throughout the week months and years you've got your heart rate variability again unfortunately physio true up isn't doing much here but anyway my heart rate variability last night before i had the 965 was 94 milliseconds and you can see my trending dip where i have felt very rough the past week and my my hrv was just going down 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 and you can see that i am feeling a little bit better today and that's represented in my hrv where it's slowly going up so really an interesting stuff here and you can literally see the dive that my heart rate variability has taken the last page of the hrv you'll be able to see if you're like in an optimal range for training I, I do again think that garmin should improve the physio true up so that yeah you can get that on different devices say that you're running your ultra with your 7x but you want to sleep wearing your you know your 265s where well, you have got the vivo smart five band um it would be cool if there was a little bit more of um continuity between the software of all of them and they weren't kind of fighting each other down here you can see the recovery uh, one's given me 16 hours one's given me 17 couldn't really tell you why um, but apparently i am recovering as an expected so that's cool to see and we've got the training readiness um, so again the watch is connected to garmin connect but it's not going to give me any information even though it's all on Garmin Connect and it's had a chance to sync but here on the 265 you can see that last night i had good sleep last night i had good recovery time M my heart rate variability is probably okay my acute load is really good my sleep history is fair to be honest it hasn't been good if you want to know more you can dive into that and go look you did take a dive with your sleep score but it's heading up and you can look at your stress history as well and see throughout the week what your stress has been like all of that information is going to be available on the 965 We've already touched heart rate variability, so we're gonna go straight past that onto the weather and have a look at the weather here. And they should be exactly the same, which they are. And I can see that it is 12 degrees. I can see that um, the high is 13 degrees 
today and the low is seven. Scrolling down, you can see weather throughout the day. No more information. It's gonna take you all the way up to four o'clock in the morning. So that's really cool. It's a little bit different here where you can see 4 a.m. has got the 4A, just to let you know that it is four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll scroll through here so you can see the general weather for the day, that the day high and the day low, and that'll take you all the way through to Tuesday. So it's Friday now, and I can look at Tuesday on the uh, 265. Not too sure why I can't look through um, any more days with the 965. So you're actually getting more information at the moment on the 265. Um, I will get back to you on that one. Again, they're both connected to my phone right now. So, and here we've got the humidity and the dew point and the UV index. So there we go. We have the sunrise and sunset. So you can see the day today is 24th of March. The sunrise was at 5.52 in the morning and the sun is going to set at 6.15. Just to let you know as well, you can go down in the days and you can go back in history and see, oh, what is the sunset gonna be in you know a week's time? So it's completely up to you. Now I was hoping to get a more powerful compass feature on the 965 and unfortunately it's no better than what you're getting on the 265 i'll show you what i mean here so we're diving in you can see you've got the altimeter we've got the degrees and we've also got the barometer and again just bear in mind that these watches are right next to each other so they will be influencing each other you can see the altimeter here and you can see the barometer and over time with the barometer you'll be able to do that on the 965 as well you'll be able to scroll through and see the pressure changes throughout the day and detect you know if you have got good history of a barometer whether you think there's going to be a storm on top of the mountain and lastly of all we do have the compass and the, the issue I do have here is that on the Fenex range even the Fenex S which is a tiny watch you have the option to take a bearing and what that means is that you can lock heading here and I didn't really expect that on the 265 to be honest but I definitely expected it on the 965 and you can't so if you want to take uh, navigation into your own hand and you want to do a lock heading feature that's not going to be available for you so a real loss here I think on the 965 they should definitely add that um, because if people are going for the bigger watch more battery life better navigational features they're probably going to be interested in a locking heading compass feature so yeah, even Sunto which is a much cheaper watch than the 965 will offer you lock heading options then we've got the steps, so you can see the steps here and you can scroll through your steps throughout the day and you can scroll down and look at your steps throughout the week and see when you actually hit your, your goals. If you hit your goal, you'll have a green tick. If you didn't hit your goal, you'll have this kind of blue bar not being filled up. At the minute, I haven't changed the goal on the 965. So my goal is currently to walk 10,000 steps, but I do usually have 15,000 steps as my goal and you can see how bad I am at actually reaching that. And you can see your distance here in miles. So yeah, I really like this to see how much time on feet is great for ultra running training to see actually yeah i didn't run today but in terms of distance at work walking the dogs um i've covered 12 miles today which is practically a half marathon so yeah really cool stuff there with the steps counter going here for sleep again we do have physio true up turned on there should be no reason why you can't see your sleep that's collected on garmin connect on your 965 but we can't so i don't know if it'd be worth you looking at small alternatives such as the vivo smart to sleep in if you're one of those people who do have issues with skin or yeah like have issues with sleeping and having a watch on kind of disturbing your sleep um you're not going to be able to get that information it seems like here because yeah i collected sleep last night on garmin connect it's not being shown on the 965 but if you were to wear your 965 you would see that you had six hours and 57 minutes of sleep you've got your score here sleep score of 83 quality is good um, it tells you the time you went to sleep here so 12 24 at night and also when you got up 7 24 a.m your duration and your sleep cycles so you've got deep sleep light rem awake It'll tell you the hours that you spent in them also a breakdown so your length of sleep was shorter than recommended but you had good continuous continuous sleep you can see your sleep stages throughout the week and your sleep score diagram so i think yeah the sleep is very cool you can take an on the demand um, pulse reading again they both have the same sensor on the back here so you can see the elevate four sensor um, i wouldn't expect any performance differences as long as you're wearing the watch tight enough um, and just to say that i have tested this against a medical grade pulse ox and seen that yeah they're very very accurate indeed a massive improvement with the elevate four sensor so if you're coming from like a 935 for example that's going to be a massive plus for you you can see your last seven days of activities so 
I've done 11 activities and six hours worth of training in the past week. I think this is really cool. And you have full options to like customize the graph options, look at your records, look at your totals. It's all up to you. For example, you can change it to seven days, 30 days, um, whatever you want. Go and get through again to the calendar. So we have no calendar events for the next 24 hours, but you can select to see your suggested workout. So today it thinks the Garmin 965 thinks that I should rest. You've had plenty of activity. You may want to take a rest and take it easy for the rest of the day and more suggestions. Let's get ready for this summer spine race. So, oh, we won't dive into that yet, but that's a very cool training option. So for the rest of the week, I can see to get ready for my spine race, I can choose to go for a long run tomorrow, 54 minutes. Sunday, do a 42 minute run. Monday, have a base training day. Tuesday, have a base training day. Wednesday is threshold training day. And Thursday is recovery day. Um, like zone one training and you can look at your plan overview. So I haven't told um, this 965 anything. It's looked at Garmin Connect and seen that I do have a 200 mile ultra marathon soon. And it's gonna tell me that my building phase is up to the 17th of May. My peak phase is until the 7th of June and my taper is up to the 16th of June. Um, so really cool stuff there. We can look at the VO2 max, so we did see that earlier, but if you want to dive in further, you can see your lactate threshold. But yeah, it would be really nice to see Garmin add the wattage feature because they're giving us watts and running power because they know that it's better, quote unquote, better than heart rate. So why can't we see it for the lactate threshold and know what watts we can hold uh, before we start slipping into, you know, that VO2 max territory into zone five. And again, you can go to the bottom and look at your predictions for the 5K, for the 10K, for the half marathon, and for the full marathon. I'd like to see Garmin add the, the 50K options as well. There are a lot of people who are into endurance who've got the Enduro 2, again, not being able to see what their 50K predictions are. And maybe a 50K could be a trial before they start to add the 100K predictions. Going down again, so we've got the next race um, feature. So my next race is the spine race. You can see here uh, it's in 12 weeks and one day on the 17th of June. June. you can see that Garmin thinks I'm going to win the race at 33 hours and 12 minutes the average temperature on the 17th of June in that destination is 14 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning so really useful information 27,000 feet of elevation and you can see 27,000 feet of decline as well and you've got the route here and take a look at the yeah follow course option so here you can see the loading speeds of the two uh, the 965 is taking a little while um, which is interesting Hopefully it can load the course because the uh, 265 is good to go. We can see the map and where we need to go. Whilst we are loading, we're just gonna pan and zoom over to the map, so zooming out. So yeah, this is where the 965 starts to show off a little bit. And you can see here, we have the route on both of the watches. Uh, on the watch, I'm able to use the screen on the 9, 965 to look at the starting near Manchester Peak District, going all the way up to Scotland. So that is the route for the spine race. And here again, we can see the route. It will give you turn by turn navigation, but there's no map behind it. Also, you can't use the touch screen to move around the map like you are on the 965. So yeah, it is uh, very cool. You can dive right in. It takes a little while to load and it's kind of diving all over the place. And the text is also very small, but it is what it is. You can definitely not get lost with that. And just see that, yeah, you can see the direction that it is and the features are actually very similar on both of them. You've got the elevation profile, the estimated time. So if you were planning to run this, it's actually very similar on the two. The race calendar, you can add more than one event to see yeah, maybe you're doing a 5K or tune-up race. You've got the health snapshot. I'll show you a little clip of that now, of what that looks like. We have the respiration rate. It's going to tell you how many breaths you're taking per minute. And you can see that dip throughout the week or rise. Um, very cool stuff. Your calories that you're burning throughout the week. You can look at your active calories and you look at your resting and also your total during the day. And that's actually quite a good breakdown because not many companies will give you that. I think course, for example, only gives you active calories and it makes you really hard if you're on a nutrition plan to actually see how many calories you're burning. You kind of have to work it out for yourself. Uh, we also have the music here, which I am recording the microphone on so i don't want to interact with that because i'll lose the mic but that's really cool that i can stop and pause my voice note um from the garmin watch you learn something new every day or you can open up your spotify go onto your recently played it'll connect to the wi-fi that's miles away and you can see i've got a vo2 max playlist here with 246 tracks so you're able to play that eventually it will load the album artwork but i have found that loading the spotify has been very slow so yeah it's uploaded one album artwork and now trying to load the rest so a little bit slow from the 
Spotify side, but you can control your phone, you can use Spotify and you can download music onto the watch. So lots of options here, that's very good. You've got your last activity. So my last activity this week was a run. Can dive a bit further in and look at the sport and see, okay, I did run three miles, but what were all the stats? You can see your run time, your average grade adjusted pace. You can see your anaerobic threshold, your vertical oscillation, absolutely everything. Oh yeah, and just so you know, you can look at loads of different sports that you recorded. Um, in your past week you've got your notifications so clicking onto notifications you can see that i've got a like on strava from linda you can choose to click onto your notifications and clear them if you want so yeah literally just clear and that'll go away from your phone as well down here you can see the battery um widget which i really like uh, it's from the connector iq store this isn't made by garmin garmin should make one though course do a fantastic battery uh, breakdown feature and where you can kind of track all of those battery metrics throughout the day. Looking through though, the long-term average so far seems to be that I'm burning 3% an hour into the 6% on the 265. So hopefully I will report back, but we're gonna see better battery life on the 965 if it doesn't die, which it has just done. Okay, mid video, thank you for that. Uh, we're switching on here, not really sure what's happening. We'll give it a few seconds, shall we? Come back, come back. Okay, so I'm not gonna click on the battery um, widget on the 965 because it made it crash. Um, we'll go down to the temperature. Um, unfortunately, there's no temperature widget on the 265, which makes no sense. But you can scroll throughout the day and see how your temp temperature of the watch on your wrist fluctuates throughout the day. And you can take samples by, yeah, leaving your watch on the, um bench outside like i have it now and see that it's actually 14 degrees uh, and yeah we're getting 13.6 on the 265. one thing i do like about this terrible app from the connect iq store is it does tell you the point option so you can see that it's not 14 it's actually 13.5 and garmin are rounding up to 14. last of all again we have the uh local time zones there's no local time zones on the 265 this is a terrible app off the connect iq store but it does have perf on there from australia it it doesn't really have anything else though but it has lots of options so i'm gonna scroll down to our see perf it's still not as good as the fenix though where you can see a whole map and click on what you would like so there we go perf is added go down to okay and perf is there so we can see that it's um one o'clock in the morning over at perf we do have a few additional options for the widget glances we also have cycling ability so if you do have a power meter which i don't you'll be able to see what your cycling ability is we also have the altitude acclimation as well but i am currently below sea level so i'm not able to test that i've used these before and i've used the heat acclimation and they are very useful to to see so that's the end of that we're just going to wrap up the video now with a quick dive into the controls are very similar on the two do you have power off you do have assistance so you can call for assistance if anything were to happen to you and you do need to, to get in contact with your loved ones or emergency services you can disconnect the bluetooth for those worried about emf radiation you can force a sync mode you can use do not disturb you can use sleep mode you can use find my phone you can use clocks you can use garmin wallet you can lock your device you can adjust the brightness on the two watches but the thing is this screen can go a multitude of different brightnesses it has a lot of variability but you're actually restricted more with a better screen three options compared to the memory and pixel where you've got about 15 million options have it five percent ten percent twenty percent yeah it would be good to see garmin offer especially for the 965 you've got this amazing screen well why can't we use it then and um change the battery brightnesses We've got broadcast heart rate, which I've been finding very useful using the Concept2 rower to connect to and get all of my rowing data. Um, yeah, so cool. We have the flashlight on both of them. Nothing special here. No kind of weird flashing that you can do, I don't think. No strobe options. So the same on both of them. We also have save location. So you can save the exact coordinates of where you are. You can turn the touchscreen on and you can turn it off. You have Wi-Fi, which you can turn off. Again, if you're worried about EMF radiation, keep that turned off. Uh, and we also have the power off options. We're back to the beginning. I didn't find any extra exciting options on the 965 that you're gonna get. So we've got airplane mode, alarm clock, we've got the altimeter, we've got the barometer, we've got the battery saver, compass, music controls, set time, stopwatch, sunrise, and timer. So yeah, literally whatever you get on the 265, you're also gonna get on the 965. You can reorder the widgets if you'd like to, and you can remove controls if you're bored of one and actually realize that you don't need it there. So you've looked at all of the control panel, you can use your touch screen finger to click onto whatever you want and swap 
swipe out of them and come back to the menu. The last thing we'll look at now with the 965 is just the settings. So to get settings, we'll hold the up menu. You can see you've got watch face settings, you've got the clocks, you've got the history, and you can dive a bit deeper here. So we can look at the activities and apps, the appearance. We can look at the notification alerts. We can look at sensors and accessories like a heart rate strap. We can look at the music. We can look at connectivity, audio prompts, user profiles, safety and tracking, wellness. We can look at the map, navigation, power manager and system. We're gonna just look at a few things here. So going into the system, we also have the ability to change the language, time, display. So you can change the display options for during activity, during sleep during general use and you can choose to turn off the always on display here if you'd like. You've also got the top options, nothing crazy there. You can change individual activities, for example. You've got the sound and vibration. Notice that there's no sound and vibration haptic feedback options like you do have on the Fenix, which, which is kind of like your premium option there for people who have kind of forked out for the Fenix. We've got the sleep mode that you can change the different scheduling times and choose to have a sleep mode watch face, which is kind of like a dimmed down watch face. You've got do not disturb, you've got hotkeys. So I've changed them now on the 965. So I've got the flashlight and the start button. We've got the hold back to take you to music controls. And we've got the hold down to take you to the watch face. So music controls, and we'll change this to uh, watch face. Fantastic, so that's kind of what I like to have hold down. What is interesting again though, is we do have the music player <laughs> button on there so you're kind of messing with the buttons here I actually prefer the, the 265s just blank buttons to be honest they look very nice and a bit less gimmicky to be honest okay so when you come out of hotkeys you have the auto lock options where you can get it to auto lock so you've got the format where you can change the units so yeah do you want your pace in miles do you want it in kilometers or your speed in kilometers do you want your depth in feet do you want your weight in pounds I want my weight in kilograms and again this is a definite benefit of having a Garmin where of course I found as a UK having miles kilometers degrees Celsius just wasn't an option so I've had to settle for you know metric or imperial here you're getting all the options that you'd want you can even have yards for swimming so it just makes so much more sense um, and millibars you, yeah you can start your week so the start of the week I'm gonna actually set to Monday because who starts their week on a Saturday or a Sunday and off we go performance condition is fantastic when you're running along it's gonna go beep tell you that you're performing better than usual or worse than usual I find that very helpful sometimes when I'm not really knowing or struggling to get in tune with my body and then it's just a bit bit more of extra confirmation. Yeah, you're doing great today or no, your initial gut feeling was right, you need to take it a little bit easier. We have the USB mode. I think I remember being told something that you need to have it in the uh, media transfer option to charge it while staying in an activity. If you know anything about that, please leave it in the description because I don't want to run an ultra, go to charge my watch and then realize that it didn't charge and maintain the activity profile rolling which I never noticed you know it worked last time I used it but I have no idea what my settings were software update so I can install an update on this watch now so that's very cool we'll do that in a second and we're down to the bottom so yeah, one last thing I'm gonna add is that yeah if you're getting the 965 one reason might have been the mapping and you're not gonna see that as a feature on the 265 there's literally no option whatsoever although you can use courses and maps um, for your turn to, by turn navigation. It's not gonna be like a very practical option. Where on the 965, you can have maps as an option, so you can click and it's gonna take you straight to your maps and you can choose to scroll around cities. I mean, I'm in a field here and I'm looking at different trails and different uh, topo lines, if you, if you will. So yeah, there's a lot more options here in terms of navigation. If you come out of the map option and I go on to navigate, you have the option to navigate courses. So yeah, I've got the spine race. You can create a new course. You can use points of interest. So I want fuel services. Where's the closest fuel service? We have um, Lundis, um, m and Supply Food, Lodging, where can I go and lodge? Wow, the Thomas Paine Hotel. Really quick actually. So I have noticed a massive improvement here compared to the Fenex 6, definitely. Recreation, what can we go do? We can go indoor bowling. We can go to the water park. Um, very impressed with this. Where's the closest hospital around me? Druggerful points. Building beach tides around me, no results. So if you wanna look at your tides, if you're a surfer, you can see that and all points of interest around me. So you can look at everything from parking, uh, etc. So we also have the around me feature. You can select an eighth of the map and it's gonna show you kind of the, the attractions in that area. We also got the round trip course. So you can go, I wanna run five miles, uh, confirm. Any direction 
and it's going to calculate a course for you. So very, very smart stuff here. I've never actually done this before. So here we've got a five mile course that is made uh, off the dot. Oh, and you can use course two, course three. You can go, do you know what? I don't want to do that one. Pick another one for me. Um, we've got activities. We have save locations. You can look at your save locations. If you want to, you know, pitch up a tent, save your location, go hiking and find your tent again. Sight and go, well, we don't have a compass locking heading feature, which is really annoying. So you only have the sight and go option, which forces you then to go into the activities. So it's a massive disadvantage if you wanted to run, for example, and you're having to use and you're following a course and you can't use your lock heading with your compass, you actually have to completely finish your course, exit it and use sight and go instead to kind of access that bearing lock heading feature. Whereas on the Fenex, for example, you can just use a bearing on the compass. We've got coordinates, so you can pump coordinates into the map and locate there. And you can also use the map to click on a location. I believe you can hold down and you can go, you know, take me there. So go to this location. So you just noticed there was a conflict there because holding the start stop button is what I originally set my flashlight to be. Um, so the flashlight come on, but actually it's also an option to navigate to on the map. So yeah, I think if you hold your finger down like you do on the Fenix, I believe you can navigate to places. I think they should allow you to hold your finger down, double tap so you don't have to rely on the buttons. Press go. And now that I've selected that location on the map, it's gonna calculate where that is and start to design a route for me. So yeah, it might take a few minutes, but it's definitely going to do it. So I still think there's quite a way to go for Garmin to make this a more functional device, but uh, all in all, it's looking really cool. I'm very excited to use this watch. I like that it's got this massive, great big screen now. I think this is as big as the 7X, but in a really kind of small, almost 265 um, form factor. But anyway, this was the unboxing. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see my full review, give me a few days, just collect a few more data and I'll get that up on YouTube. Peace out. So thanks for watching. You know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe if you can. My slogan, dreams are a step away. And remember, show compassion, show esteem and have fun out there. Peace out.